Okay, so recently I received this from Cytron. Uh, it's a box of goodies and uh, it basically contains a load of maker discs, but I'll explain those in a minute. Now, when you first get a Raspberry Pi, uh, sometimes it can be a bit daunting as how to set it up. Let's switch over to screen capture. So often when you buy a Raspberry Pi 4 or 400, it doesn't come with an operating system pre-installed. So you need to have another device to create that operating system. So in this case, I've shown how to set it up with an Android phone. Uh, but I also did a video showing how to set it up with a Chromebook, an iPad or an iPhone. And also you can use Windows or Mac or a Linux computer if you've already got one. But there's a much easier solution and that's to get a pre-installed copy of Raspberry Pi OS. The reason people use Raspberry Pi OS is because it's the most supported operating system on the Raspberry Pi. And I'm currently running from this Raspberry Pi key. I've got one of these in my Pis at the moment. But uh, they're not the biggest of storage. Uh, so 32 gig is the biggest storage. And as you can see, 2950 in the UK, uh, it's not the cheapest device. There are definite benefits to it and durability is excellent on the Raspberry Pi key. So over an SD card, there is an advantage. But for the cost, you don't get a lot of storage. But the maker discs I've been sent are on 32, 64 or 128 micro SDs. Um, but also I'll show you some more options in a minute. But uh, micro SDs are very cheap for the Pi, pretty durable. And uh, in the case of these, they've actually selected some which are pretty quick as well. Sometimes you get these pre-installed operating systems and the storage is slow. And so you get sort of a negative opinion of the Raspberry Pi. Um, but uh, yeah, with a faster micro SD, it's definitely a lot better. But I've also been sent both of these. So I've been sent an M.2 drive, which is super fast, and also an SSD drive. Now, I always tend to run my main operating system from an SSD drive, just because I think overall the compatibility and the speed is excellent especially for the money as well but i'll be interested to see how much faster this m.2 drive is i have a uh, well this is an m.2 drive i've already got a kingston one uh, with a little usb adapter uh, so i'm going to pop it in that and i'm going to try that uh, but i've also got my csl cable which is what i generally use for my sata drives so i think i'm going to boot up with a micro sd card first of all uh, just to see what, what experience you get, if I can get in there. So this is the 32 gig one, but I've also been sent a 64 and a 128 as well. So I've just shut this down. So let's re remove the Raspberry key and pop in this maker disk 32 gig. There you go. And let's start up. So after a short while, you're greeted with this, uh, which is uh, a very easy to understand, very straightforward desktop. So you haven't had any sort of stumbling to get the Raspberry Pi to up and running. Once you've got this as well, there are loads of advantages to it. So if we follow through, I won't do all the setup because it, it's so straightforward. This bit's important uh, where it says about the black border around the screen. So we click that to say, yes, there is a black border. It will get rid of it the next time it reboots. I can skip this network setting, but it would basically just set up your Wi-Fi. Uh, the reason I can skip it is because I'm using an Ethernet cable. And I'm going to let it update. Uh, it's going to check everything and update on its own. You can see here that the cards are A1 rated, so nice and fast. Uh, but also it says approved for Raspberry Pi for use with Raspberry Pi products. Okay, so that's all finished and let's hit restart. And so just to show what comes installed uh, once it's restarted, uh, if we hit the start here, so programming, you've got all sorts of things in here. Look. But then we've got education, office, we've got the full LibreOffice suite. Internet wise, we've got the Chrome web browser and uh, we've also got things like VNC viewer. So we've got VLC already installed, image viewer for photos. We've got several games installed as standard on here. Accessories wise, plenty in here so I can do a speed test in a minute. Uh, SD card copier to back up your devices. Uh, but the one thing that doesn't come installed in Raspberry Pi OS, which definitely should, uh, is Raspberry Pi Imager, and this is how you get more operating systems. So to get that, we're going to go to Preferences, Add Remove Software, and we're going to type in Imager, and hit Return, and then scroll all the way to the bottom, and then look at the top here, Raspberry Pi Imager 1.6.2. Let's click on that, apply, pop in the password, which is going to be Raspberry, unless you've changed it. Okay, and that's all done, so I can close that down. So with Imager, now if I go to Accessories, you'll see that Imager is there. 
The reason Imager is so important is because we can install loads of different operating systems automatically from here. So if we wanted another copy of Raspberry Pi OS, so that's what we've already got on the Pi. Uh, there are various different versions if you want lighter versions. Uh, there's also general purpose OS. So we've got Ubuntu, Manjaro and RISC OS. So if we click on Ubuntu, you get various different versions of that as well. For various different Pies as well, if you've got other Pies, you might want to download a different version for a different Pi. Uh, Media Player, RetroPie and Recallbox for running all the emulators and things like that, really, really good. Um, but also we've got Use Custom, uh, which is a way of selecting a custom image. So if we wanted to download the latest version of Kali Linux, which has only just come out, we can find that from the website, download the image, and then we can install it. I've got separate videos on that. Erase, it's very good to be able to erase and format SD cards, uh, especially cards you've got issues with. This often will still format them. But we've also got a bootloader EEPROM fix here, which is a way of fixing your Pi. So there's all sorts of great things in Raspberry Pi Imager. I really can't understand why it doesn't come installed as standard, but Raspberry Pi OS doesn't come with this. Okay, so I've done some speed tests and uh, I'm gonna now use the SSD drive and see how well that works. So I've got this USB to SATA cable. Not all USB to SATA cables work. Uh, this is a CSL one, there's a link in the description um, and uh, it doesn't need you to do anything else. It just, it just should just work fine. So let's shut that down. Pop that into USB 3. And let's switch off, unplug my, oh, unplug my micro SD card and then switch back on again. And while that's doing the updates on the SSD, I'm gonna to start to sort out my M.2 drive and I'm gonna do that on my Pi 400 uh, just to get it set up, but I'm gonna do all the tests on the Pi 4 just so all the tests are the same. So you can see it's here in this cardboard. Let's pop that out. I'm hoping it's exactly the same fitting. You know, with M.2 drives, they can be slightly different fittings, um, but yeah, this is the same as the Kingston one that I've got. So pop that in there and close that up. So I'm gonna do the same, plug it into USB 3 and switch it on. Yeah, you can see that starting up fine. Okay, so this is running from the SSD drive. I've got the speed tests I did on the 32 gig SD card, which are here. So let's do some speed tests and see what this SSD drive is like. Uh, it should be a lot faster. And I was happy with the 32 gig for speeds. So run tests. I generally run them three times just to get a, a sort of in the middle result, although all of those were very similar. So yeah, none of them had a bad result. Yeah, that was super quick. You can see on the right hand side, so show log. And let's copy them over. So you can see we're talking about 29,101 versus 271,000. Uh, and then we're talking about random write speed of 801 versus 10,835. Uh, and then random read speed, 2,769 versus 12,402. So it'll be interesting to see if the M.2 is faster than that. I'm gonna do three tests and then I'll compare them. Okay, so that's all the tests done. Uh, I just need to boot up from the M.2 drive next and uh, compare the results. Just finishing installing the updates on my Pi 400. Okay, so this is running from the M.2 drive now and I've just done an SD card speed test and as you can see from here, uh, it's the fastest score today. So 281,270 beats every single one of the sequential write speeds on the 120 gig SSD. Uh, the random write speed is well, the same on the third result there, uh, but the random read speed beats all of them. So. The M.2 is faster, but the best experience I've had uh, with drives has definitely been with SSDs. So there's not a lot of difference in the speed between them, but the compatibility of SSDs seems to be better. And also they're less fussy if you plug another device in. If I plug this in when the M.2 drive is in, I get an error. If I plug it in with the SSD or the SD card, I don't get an error. So I definitely prefer the SSD drives for overall compatibility. But this could just be down to the USB adapter that I've got, uh, because I've definitely had incompatibilities with this Kingston drive and certain operating systems that I know work on an SSD drive. So uh, yeah, I still think that I'm gonna mainly stick to SSD, but I need to really try and source a better M.2 adapter to see if that's what it is, because I might find that M.2 
works better with a different adapter. One that I want to be more compatible basically with every operating system. So I thought I'd finish off with a side-by-side -side test just to try and show how much quicker an SSD drive is in normal operation. So I've got an SD card in this Pi, they're both Pi 4s, uh, 64 gig maker disk SD card and the 120 gig SSD. Uh, and if I start both things at the same time, so on the bottom screen is the SSD and the top screen is the SD card. So let's launch LibreOffice Impress on both at the same time and see what happens. Yeah, definitely faster on the SSD. And uh, playing around with the systems, I mean, you definitely notice the SSD feeling a lot snappier. Uh, it's not that the SD card is unusable, it's just that the SSD, it, everything just seems to work a bit snappier, and it's just nicer to use in general. So thanks to Cytron for sending me all of these devices. I'll put a link in the description if you want to buy one. Uh, even the SD cards I thought were decent speeds and felt pretty snappy. Um, but uh, my money at the moment is definitely on SSD drives. I just prefer them for compatibility. But that could be that I've never had the right M.2 adapter. So I'm going to have a look at different M.2 adapters and see which one is going to be better performing on the Raspberry Pi. But uh, I hope you like this. Hope it helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.